Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm Megan. And we are back with another episode of Recipes and Recollections. This one's a special episode. We are doing it to celebrate Colorado's 144th birthday. And the way we're going to do that is by cooking what? We are going to make oatmeal chocolate chip cake. Should be fun. It's exciting. <laughs> Happy birthday, Colorado. As usual, we'll start with the ingredients and then stick around at the end and we'll learn a little bit about how Colorado became a state. Ooh. One cup firmly packed brown sugar. One and three fourth cup flour. Half a cup of nuts chopped. We're using one. One cup quick oatmeal. What, what is quick? What do, what do they mean by quick? We don't know. Like it's it's it's. I think the way it's processed makes it easier. It cooks faster. But we're using regular oatmeal, and I think it's gonna be fine. Oh. Four ounces of butter. One tablespoon cocoa. Is there a reason you got the special dark? Uh, that's just what was there. There's actually not a ton of cocoa at our grocery store. Can you sing uh, Remember Me by Coco? <laughs> Half teaspoon coarse kosher salt. Figured out how to say it. Coarse kosher salt. Coarse kosher salt. Coarse it's kosher easy. salt. One teaspoon baking soda. One bag of chocolate chips. Two eggs. One cup granulated sugar. What is granulated? Like grain? He's asking me all these surprise questions. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, they're little granules. So it's, you know, they make these blocks of sugar. It's like broken down, I think. One and three fourths cups <laughs> boiling water. Okay, I always do that when I'm starting. Um, it's like my own little clapper thing, right? Pop out, ready. Action. Okay, we are making oatmeal chocolate chip cake. Uh, again, this is out of across Colorado. This is in the dessert section. And I think this will be really good. Uh, it's gonna be a fun way to celebrate Colorado's birthday. Um, plus it's always a good day when we get to eat cake. I put my apron on, this nice striped apron from Jeremy, he got it for our anniversary because he knows I love to cook. So I'm ready to get messy and make this cake. Five years! Five, Five years. year anniversary. So sweet. Where's the ring? I get that question a lot. <laughs> Not from me! Where's the, where's the ring, Jeremy? The, the people don't need to know about that. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, anyway. So, <laughs> Um, because everyone's gonna think it's me that's asking. Oh. No, no. What do you mean? No, just leave it. It's From family and, and and friends and people I just met. Why why is that a thing? Why why is it like the first like oh how long have you been with your girlfriend? You say oh five years. They the first I just met you and your first question is where's the ring? You're you're already delving into my marital relationship. And I just met you uh, literally five minutes ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> aside from all of that drama, we're gonna make a cake. So the first thing we're gonna do um, that I've already done is preheat our oven to 350 degrees. The um, instructions say to grease and flour a nine by 13 inch cake pan or two nine inch round pans. Um, I think a round cake looks more festive, plus we have this very cool Colorado plate that we can put it on. So we are gonna do uh, two nine inch uh, round pans. I only have one, so I'm gonna bake them in, in two batches. This is what's called a spring form pan, so it has this thing on the side that pops loose. What I'm gonna do is take the bottom piece and trace um, or just cut out 
a circle on some parchment paper so I can keep that on the bottom um, so that the cake doesn't stick as much. You could trace this with a pencil and then cut it out, but that's just gonna help us to take the cake out and for it to not get stuck on the bottom. And then I'm gonna grease and flour the pan. I'm actually just gonna take this, the butter that we're gonna use because it's not, it's like a very small amount that we'll lose buttering this. If you have um, the cooking spray, you could also just do that. That would be easier. We have our pan prepped. So I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to boil my one and three fourths cup of water just in my tea kettle. So I'm going to get that going. And then in my bowl, um, I'm going to put in my oatmeal or my oats. We are using, these are old fashioned oats. Uh, this is just what I already had and I've been trying to use up things that I already have in our kitchen. Um, so I'm hoping that this will be fine and not affect it too much. You should talk about weevils. Now it's always the oats that bring the weevils. This one, no. Because it's Kroger man. Quaker oats give us the weevils. Again, I don't want to get sued by Quaker. <laughs> They're very powerful. Yeah, also, the guy on the Quaker oats, he looks younger and younger. Yeah, he's The people... older I get. Oh, yeah. Because you're getting old. And then you're like, hey, he's really He's looking pretty old. good for a 1700s Quaker. Quaker man? Quakers have no drama, so they don't age. They got no drama? Yeah, because they're pacifist. Yeah, right? Yeah, they're like World War One, even even World War Two. No thanks. No thank you. So in our bowl we have one cup of our oats or our oatmeal if you're using that. Was that disco fever? I don't know what that is. <laughs> ABBA, that's ABBA in Oh, I love ABBA. So this has come to a boil. What I would recommend and what I did is to measure your water first, pour it into your tea kettle and heat that instead of heating a random amount of water and then trying to measure it out after it's boiled because it will be very hard to do that. So measure it and then boil it. We poured our boiling water in and we are going to let this sit for 10 minutes. Um, there's still a little bit of water, but you can see they've, they've definitely like plumped up and are kind of thick and they look like oatmeal. We are um, going to add our butter. So in the original recipe, it calls for margarine. Um, I don't really like margarine that much, so we are going to use butter instead. Um, and butter and margarine are very interchangeable. Uh, margarine used to be used Don't more. tell that to the margarine industry. I won't recipes from my grandmother and great-grandmother's generation, there was a lot more margarine being used because it was cheaper than butter. Um, but I think now most people prefer it, but you could use margarine if you have it where you like it. And it says to stir this until melted. So the heat from our oats and that hot water that's been in there um, should kind of start to melt our butter. There's a little baby butter piece. Speaking of babies, we have some baby birds that are nesting on our balcony and they are so cute. They just hatched a few days ago. So we've been watching them. They're super cute. Happy birthday, Colorado. And also happy birthday to these little, tiny, little, adorable baby birds. All of our butter has melted in with our oats. So we have this nice kind of creamy oat mixture. And now we're gonna add in our sugars. This is gonna be sweet cake, I think. So it's got one cup of regular <laughs> sugar and one cup of brown sugar. I'm going to mix in my sugars and then I'm gonna uh, mix my eggs in next. We're doing two eggs. One, two, three. 
two. I could do this. Ooh. So this mixture is, um, it's pretty runny right now, um, but that's because it doesn't have any flour in it. So we're gonna add um, so some of our dry ingredients next. So we're gonna do our one and three fourths cup of flour. The other thing I do when I measure flour is I kind of mix it in the container first um, to kind of aerate it and then measure it. So you don't get any big like lumps of flour. So we're gonna do our flour and I'm gonna do the baking soda as well. And our baking soda is one teaspoon. I'm not gonna mix it all the way, I'm just gonna kind of start to get it incorporated. And then I'm gonna add the rest of my dry stuff which is my salt and my cocoa. We are doing half of a teaspoon of salt. If you don't like salt, I would maybe do a little bit less than this, especially if you're using coarse, <laughs> coarse kosher salt, um, because it can be kind of, again, salty. Um, Is it salty salt? Salty salt. So that half teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of cocoa. Do you think Coco deserved the Oscar? Yes. What's a better movie, uh, Coco or what was the other one? The, the, the one that came before it? The, the book? Book of oh, Life. Oh, Book of Life. Yeah. Coco. Book they're of Life. Both, they're both book so of good. Life's not bad, though. Not bad. It's been a while since I've seen it. I mean, I remember when they first started thinking about Coco, I was like, Book of Life already exists. Why are you making another Day of the Dead, uh, you know, Dia de los Muertos movie when there's already Book of Life? Boy, was I wrong, you know. I mean, Turns why can't there could... be two? There's like a bajillion princess movies. Yeah. Why can't you have two Dia de los Muertos movies? Do you consider Moana a Disney princess movie? What a question. No. Even though she's the son of a king. I think that Disney princess movies fall into this very predictable, like, she's in distress and then she ends up with a man. Moana does not end up with anybody. Mm -hmm. It's all about her. It's totally focused on her. There's no romantic storyline. It's just literally about her journey. And so I'd call it a Disney adventure movie. We have folded in our sugar, our eggs, our flour, baking soda, salt, and cocoa. Just to recap. And we've mixed well. Um, now it says fold half of a cup of chocolate chips into the batter. So we're going to do half a cup in our batter. I'm actually going to do a little bit more. The extra chocolate chips never hurt anybody. And we're going to mix that all together. According to our recipe, this is done. What I mentioned before was that I only have one round cake pan. So what I'm gonna do is try to just eyeball half of this um, and pour it into here and then put the rest of the batter in the fridge. Uh, and once our first cake is done and cooled, I'll take it out and then bake the second cake. Ugh. Hands and pans. <laughs> Coming back. So this baked for about 30 minutes. Um, I tested it with a chopstick um, and it came out pretty clean. So I think it's good. And it's also kind of started to pull away from the edge of the pan. Um, it looks kind of crispy on the outside, so yay. Um, we are gonna let this cool for a little bit in here, and then I'm gonna take it out and put it on a wire rack to finish cooling, and then we will cut into it and eat it. Okay, let's see it. Okay. This is a very cool vintage Colorado plate that I got, or we got, at a vintage store in Pueblo, um, and I thought that would be fun to put the cake on. 
for Colorado's birthday. Um, but it's got all sorts of fun like places on it. It's got the Molly Brown House, Red Rocks, Garden of the Gods, the Royal Gorge, Mesa Verde. Um, all the sites. And it has Lark, the Lark Bunting, which is our state bird. The, the worst, vine. the worst state symbol there is. The bird is so boring. You've got the Columbine. You've got the t the turtle, the painted turtle. You've got the Stegosaurus. All the state symbols are better than the Lark Bunting. So, um, this is just a fun, yeah, plate that celebrates Colorado. It's got a lot of cities on it. Um, there's Dinosaur National Monument on there. Um, we just went there. We just went there. That was super fun. Um, it's got a picture of the Capitol by Denver. So, great sand dunes. So, it's fun to look at because it's, it's got this cool vintage vibe to it, but also just to look at it and think about all the beautiful places in our state. We're What's your happy. favorite place in the state? You had to pick one, you had to narrow it down. That's tough. If you had someone coming in from out of town and they were like, I have unlimited time and I just want to go to one, I want to go to the best, you know, I only have one day and I want to go somewhere in Colorado. Distance is not an issue. What, what would you say? Um, I really like, I don't know, it's hard to pick one place. I mean, I like the sand dunes. I like the San Luis Valley. I like Durango. I think Durango's a cool town. Um, and then you can go to Mesa Verde. I don't know. It's hard. I know you would say Mesa Verde. I would definitely say Mesa Verde. Yeah. I love Mesa Verde. Um, I don't know. It's tough. But I, feel, I do feel like I'm from Southern Colorado, so I feel like it's a little underrated, so probably somewhere down there, like in the like the Sangre de Cristo um, mountains or I feel like those don't get enough love. What I did in my pan, um, since I'm going to take it out of this pan, I just ran an, a butter knife around the outside um, and then I loosened my pan so I can try to pop this off, hopefully. There we go. And then I'm going to take this and put it here to cool. And then in just a second, we'll put it on our plate. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Are we singing the whole song? Happy birthday, birthday Colorado. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, it doesn't work with the mask on. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Happy birthday, Colorado! I hope your oatmeal chocolate chip cake was as good as ours. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Cocoa Puffs. Um, I don't know if it reminded you of that. That's what I thought of as I ate it. I thought it was very good. Uh, Megan and I are actually already one cake down, uh, and we have one more cake to work on, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, now that we've done the cooking, Let's go ahead and learn a little bit about how Colorado became a state. Colorado officially joined the Union on August 1st, 1876, but that wasn't the first time Colorado tried to join the Union. The story of statehood started almost 30 years earlier in 1850, when a group of hopeful miners stumbled onto a few flakes of gold in a creek just outside of present-day Denver. They returned in 1858 to look for more gold, and within a year, News of the strike ignited Colorado's gold rush of 1859, in which thousands of hopeful miners streamed into Colorado looking to strike it rich. But there was a problem. Colorado was still part of the Kansas Territory, and the land the miners needed to dig in still belonged to the native peoples living in what would become Colorado. The early residents used several legal mechanisms to try to establish a legal claim to the gold including petitioning the White House and U.S. Congress to extinguish the natives' claim to the land. Ultimately, the miners decided to create their own territory, carved out of parts of modern-day Colorado, Wyoming, Kansas, and Nebraska. 
While their territorial claim was never recognized outside of Colorado, the Jefferson Territory, as it was then known, had its own laws and administrators. The Jefferson Territory only lasted for 16 months and was dissolved by the U.S. Congress in 1861. In its place, the Colorado Territory was formed, which governed the state until 1876. Colorado petitioned to become a state several times, but voters rejected the proposed constitution once, and the petition was denied at the federal level in the late 1860s because it refused to grant rights to black people living in Colorado. Finally, in July 1876, the Constitution, written in Spanish, German, and English, was ratified, and President Ulysses S. Grant signed off on Colorado statehood on the first day of August, 100 years after the Declaration of Independence was ratified and America became a nation.